Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see each other this morning. Glad to have you in church and be part of our church worship today, family. I uh, want to lift up any announcements I may have this morning. Got a pretty little girl with us today. Um, let's see, announcements. Right the second Wednesday of each month, 10.30. will be next August, on August the 8th. Mark your calendar for that. Anything else? Some of you I heard was petitioning me for rain, want to pay me a little extra for rain. I have nothing to do with that. That was kind of funny though. I looked up here and I saw my envelope from my check and I thought, wow, they really are going to pay me for that. That's my envelope from last time. So. You best deliver if you want another one. Yeah. <laughs> if I had anything to do with that, it would probably make a mess of things. So I'm going to let the Lord take care of that. But we certainly, we got a little rain when we were at in Georgia and it was, uh, but it all worked out. We didn't miss a, uh, work day we got to do all the things we need to do so god is good always any other announcements okay if not we'll go ahead and begin our service today um don't forget the upcoming birthdays notice those there in your list and uh our first uh, song is number 707 invite those who are able to stand please stand <laughs> sing about the, the river. How's that? 723. Oh 
Anyone else? I have family coming today from Michigan and Illinois, and they're going to be there four days. So. Is that a prayer or concern? <laughs> Do we need to call you or solve and say we need you to come to town or something? Okay. I guess we need to say a prayer for the family of the young lady that lost her life on Highway 70. I understand she has two very young children. Pray for them. And please be careful how we said it. I've never seen some of the stuff that happened on the highway. I mean, we were driving one day and somebody passed us on the hill right in front of where Fonda Hillman and the Tulip Tree, and that's, that's where this lady got killed. And passed us, meeting cars, and just never hesitated. I, I just, Carol got a lot of place, <laughs> Probably. <laughs> it's just crazy. I mean, people. Uh, I love the girl on the trip. We uh, were on the trip this time, and we pulled out to uh, leave Walmart, just like the mark. We had a Walmart market, a little small place just above the church. And, we pulled out, everything was clear. I wasn't driving, Miss Jean was, and she's a good driver. Pulled out, everything was clear, and here come this guy just flying over the hill, went between us and missed another car. And, I mean, the good Lord was with us, but but it's just in a matter of seconds, things like it can happen. Please be careful, and it's not as much about your driving as watching the other person, because they're, That's true. so be in prayer, and uh, lift that family up. That's my little speech on driving today, but pray for one another. Anyone else? Okay. If not, don't. If not, don't forget those that are on our list today. All the ones that we list each, each week. Uh, everything from the farmers to the victim of crimes, veterans. Uh, we're thankful for every person on this list, and we continue to lift them up. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear God, it is good to be in your house. It's good to be in your presence. You are there for us each time we lift up our voices. You know in our hearts what we need before we ever speak. We thank you, dear God, for all the blessings we received already this morning. Thank you for the wonderful music and musician. Thank you for those who have sang and listened. Thank you, dear God, for those that in some way have been part of this uh, service, reading of scripture, or sharing the good news. God, we thank you. And we pray for every person on this list. We pray for those in the hospital. We pray for those that have lost loved ones. God, give us your coverage of of protection and be with us each day and God as we pray together let us remember the prayer you taught us to pray we join together our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's reading uh, is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 3 through 14, as we think about forgiveness. And let us hear God's word. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Accordingly, as he hath chosen us, in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love having predestined us to the adoption of children by jesus christ himself according to the good pleasure of his will to the praise of his glory of his grace where he hath made us accepted in the beloved in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace wherein he hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, which hath purposed in himself, that in dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one of all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are in earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will we should be to praise of his glory, which first trusted in Christ. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, whom after 
that you believe you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance, and to the redemption of purchased possession, and to the praise of his glory. This is the word of God for the people of God. I want us to hear the verse, verse 7. It says, we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. This to me is one of the most treasured gifts that God gives us. He gives us forgiveness. And he reminds us to not only uh, receive this forgiveness, redemption through his blood, but also we are to forgive one another. In one part of the scripture, I know Jesus was asked how much, how many times should we forgive our brothers or sisters? And he said seven times. He said, no, not seven, but seven times seven. And that for us as humans is hard, isn't it? When someone just uh, does you wrong, it's hard to say, I forgive you. Matter of fact, in the South, instead of forgiving, we say, bless your heart. Amen. That's pretty much what we say. I'm not going to translate that to anybody, but you know what I'm saying. And, and so it's important for us to, to have forgiveness. What would life be like if there was no forgiveness? Can you imagine the hatred we'd have toward one another? The anger we'd have, we'd never be able to, to be able to associate with the other because somebody, somebody did something wrong to me, so therefore, there's no forgiveness. There's only vengeance. And I think that's what happens many times and we see the, the gang fights and some of the things that happen around society. Uh, we see families divided. Uh, people will never speak to each other again for, for the rest of their life. It's because they have not embraced the understanding of forgiveness. Forgiveness is when you... Uh, let not that which is in front of you be a stumbling block. You allow that to be removed. And you allow a free path that you still have communication. Uh, God forgave us. He forgave us in a miraculous way. He did it in a way that's a bigger scale than we ever thought before. He allowed his son Jesus to come and to die for our sins. What a great gift. What a great gift that God has given to us. Have you ever had someone who say, I forgive you, but I don't forget? I'm guilty of that. I forgive you, but don't think I didn't remember that, you know, what you did to me. And I'm going to be very cautious the next time. But God is that one who <clears throat> forgives us and remembers our sins no more. It's like a big chalkboard with all of our sins and God uh, takes that eraser and he erases those things because his blood is applied to our lives through his death of his son Jesus on the cross. And I'm thankful today for forgiveness because if I begin to reminisce the things I've done in my life and I, I have a pretty good memory of things past. I, I see I can remember stuff when I was five years old. Now I may not remember what you told me yesterday but I can remember stuff way back. Amen Tammy? Amen. Uh, and I don't know what that is, but I, I have a, a long-term memory, but sometimes my short memory is not too good. I remember one time I was upset with my mother, and I said some very horrible things to her. I was a teenager, and I thought I knew more than she did, and I was wanting to go do something. I was old enough to drive, and Mom was trying to get me straightened out and say, you don't need to do this. And I remember talking ugly to Mom. It was the only time I ever really did. Uh, I, that's one thing. I was as a child. I was very respectful of my parents. One is... Uh, they'd have beat me to death if I didn't. Amen. So uh, I, I think I understood the precaution that was coming. But no, I had respect for them. And I remember one time I, I talked ugly to my mom. The only time I ever did in my whole life. And I still remember that. And I, and I don't want to commit that again. And so I asked her forgiveness. And she said, I forgot about that right after you said it. I said, well, mom, I didn't. I still remember it. And she says, many times, she says, don't worry about that. You're forgiven for that. And, that. and that's the way we are. We torture ourselves. We beat ourselves up because we think of something we've done in the past. And we think God has never forgotten it. But God has forgotten it. And that's why so many people come to church and they say, I can't go to church. I, I, God will never forgive me for all my sins. And, and guess what? He has and he will. He forgets it as soon as you ask for forgiveness. God, forgive me for I have sinned against you and against heaven. God, forgive me for I have done you wrong. And he says, you are forgiven. And then he adds one more phrase like they did the woman who uh, there they was going to stone in the Bible. You remember that scripture where they were going to stone her? And he said, he without sin cast the first stone. We heard that quote several times. But don't forget the rest of the story, as Paul Harvey would say. 
Jesus said, now go and sin no more. Part of forgiveness is understand that you do not go and sin and do the same things again. You learn from that infraction that you had and you become a new creature in Christ and you don't want to do those things anymore. I learned my valuable lesson by back talking to my mother that even though she didn't punish me, I was big enough that she kind of let that slide, but, but my humility made me understand I had done something wrong. And so I asked forgiveness and, and by her grace of, of loving me, she forgave me. It says, to the praise and the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Because of his forgiveness, we have his inheritance. We have that promise of heaven. We have that promise of eternal life. He said he hath made and known to us the mystery of his will. This is God's will that we should be forgiven. And that our sins should be forgotten. And that we should have the promise of eternal life. He said, having made us known the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he hath purposed in himself. It is in God's plan that we be forgiven. Now let me ask the second part of the question. Are there those in your life that you haven't forgiven? Try to forgive them with God's help. You know, we've all had people wrong us. We've had people do things to us that were just absolutely unexcusable. But what if we can step up and be the bigger person and say, I forgive them because Christ first forgave me. I remember a couple years ago that I knew I was working with at HIS and this, uh, this girl, I grew up with her and they had a little baby and her husband and her husband got mad at her because they was both working and she decided uh, to go out and spend a whole lot of money on that child, on her baby. And her husband got mad and he said some things. He said some things he shouldn't have said to her. And, and they were never the same as a couple again. Matter of fact, they ended up divorcing because he said something that was ugly to her and, and she never forgave him. She told me, I remember back when I was, she said I could never forgive him because it hurt me so bad. And my words were heard, Lord, we got to forgive. We got to forgive as God has forgiven us. She lived a miserable life there, separated from her husband because she couldn't forgive. But now, I think he probably could have helped the situation a little bit if he had asked for forgiveness too. You know, that would have made a big difference. But we all face those situations. We face those times. But my word for you today is, is forgiveness is more than just, just saying I forgive you, but it's, it's forgetting and put that in the past and saying there's no more of that divide between us. And, and that's exactly what God did with us when we were separated from him. You know, that divide that we had when, when Satan tempted those in the garden and they, they disobeyed God and sin came upon them. And there was a great divide between us and God. And so God saw this need for forgiveness. And so what did he do? He sent his son Jesus who provided a bridge between God and humanity. And that forgiveness was given. And it was more than just an act of saying, I forgive you. But instead, Jesus came down and he died on the cross for us. Forgiveness. That's a powerful word. Someone asked us uh, about, we was on the mission trip, we was talking about forgiveness. We was talking about uh, redemption. We was talking about acceptance and, and grace, what grace was. I tried to explain what grace was, and I said, well, it says that he gives us forgiveness of sin according to the riches of his grace. So what is grace? And I said, grace is when, when you go to trial, and God is going to pronounce judgment upon you, but instead, he forgives you, and he doesn't give you any time for your crime. Grace is when he says, you're absolutely guilty, you deserve what you're going to get, but I love you so much that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take your place. Grace. He forgives us that way. Grace is that we don't deserve. Grace is that, that we can't expect because God loves us. He gives us grace. And he gives us forgiveness of our sins. You know, we can't get to heaven without forgiveness of sins. Did you know that? Heaven has no place for sin, so we need forgiveness. Do you remember when the first time you asked God to forgive you for something? That you realized that you were a sinner and you were broken, you needed help, and you asked God to forgive you, and, and remember that relief that you had when he said, you are forgiven? Amen? Is this thing on? Hello? You remember that? You may have turned that down. I may have messed you up right there. 
But, but you know, I, I think we need to hear that this morning. It's an exciting thing to think about uh, the forgiveness that God gives us. You are a sinner. I am a sinner. We all have our problems. We're all broken. We've all done terrible things. But God loves us, and His grace is so abundant that He says, guess what? You're forgiven. And you can go on and live and do more and more for my kingdom. Think about all the disciples that God chose that had a lot of problems. I mean, look at Peter. He denied Jesus. Look at Paul. My goodness, Paul persecuted Christians. Put them to death. Think about all the problems they had. Even Judas, who was, who was picked as a disciple, he betrayed Jesus for money. Imagine what he can do in our lives. All of us are available for service. All of us are, are valuable for him and for his kingdom. And so he makes us as part of that inheritance. And the only way we can receive that inheritance is through redemption of his blood upon our lives and upon forgiveness. He said in verse 14, which is the earnest of our inheritance unto redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. He has purchased us through his blood on the cross of Calvary. So I say to you today, and all you that trust him, hear the word of the truth, as the Bible says, the gospel of salvation, whom after you may believe and be sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise, that you are forgiven. Go and sin no more. Amen? You are forgiven. So you don't have to put your head down and say, I'm just an unworthy person. You don't have to be sad because you feel like that no one loves you because God loves you. And because God loves you, his brothers, our brothers and sisters love you, and we love you. And even though you've been broken, God is a great healer. He can bring you back. So the word today I want you to hear, and I want you to share it wherever you go. And remember this in your heart. I am forgiven. And because I am forgiven, I can forgive you and forgive others. Because he said if we can't forgive our brothers and sisters, how could we expect God to forgive us? What a great gift has been given to us today. It has made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good pleasure, with you have purpose in himself, that we are forgiven. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for the promise that you give us that if we submit ourselves to you today and ask for your forgiveness, we shall receive it. God, you loved us even before we were born. You offered your grace to us even when we were undeserving. You gave us a promise. That those that confess their mouth and believe in their hearts shall be saved. And because of this, Lord, we are forgiven. When we confess that we have sinned against you in heaven, we have sinned against our brothers and sisters, and Lord, we're not worthy of the forgiveness we get. But yet you step out in faith, in our faith, and you give us forgiveness. Now, Lord, if there's one here today that does not know you as Lord and Savior, Lord, they need to walk a little bit closer with you. I pray, God, they realize they have been forgiven. And, Lord, they can walk in a new life. I thank you, dear God, for your word. I thank you, dear God, for your promise. And I thank you for your grace of forgiveness. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. What a great word of commitment to the song that says, Oh, Master, let me walk with thee. And certainly if we embrace the understanding of his forgiveness, we're able to walk with him daily. Let us stand and sing number 430, those who are able. Let us sing together. If you have a need this morning, I invite you to come. This altar is always open for you to come and pray. Number 430. <laughs>
Miss Nancy this morning for the beautiful music. Beautiful song. I'll tell you more about our, our uh, mission trip as I begin to get my memory back. Uh, we did have a great time. Uh, some of you got to see some of the pictures we did. Uh, had it posted on Facebook. And, uh, I want to tell you, it was just a blessing uh, to help some of the folks that we were able to help. And we got the kids encouraged. They're going to start doing some more things with rifles and some different ones. And I'm excited about that. Um, we worked hard. Uh, we represented the church well. The kids were great, very well disciplined kids. Uh, we had a lot of fun. Uh, but to see the, and you know, working with rifle, you see the face of those who desperately need help. And you're able to be a hand of God to them. And what a blessing that is. And we got to see that. And I'll give you more details about that. But as we go, as like I said, as I remember more about it, but, but um, we had, uh, uh, we did 20, 20 boxes of hams, we gave out 40 pound boxes, uh, we uh, did rice, and cookies, and don't worry, I didn't eat none of them, but we did all that, uh, and we reached people that really needed uh, special help, and some of them just wanted to pray with them, that was worth so much, uh, just extend a hand. Or maybe give them a bottle of water. Um, but my forgiveness today is, is, is God forgive us that we don't always see those folks. Because they're there, all around us. And we need to pray to forgive one another for not reaching out. But thank you again for being here this morning. Pray God's blessing upon you. Pray if you need rain, God will send you rain. Don't send you checks of money just yet. Just wait and see how it works out. But, but uh, we are glad to be back in Tennessee in God's country, as I call it. And glad to be with you this morning. All hearts and minds clear. If y'all see any police cars over our friend's house and family fighting, y'all go over and help. Okay. Okay. Let's pray together. Father, we go forth now. We thank you for your love and mercy and grace. We thank you mostly for forgiveness. God, we all desire it. We all need it. And Lord, we stand in need of it today. Forgive us of our sins. Send us forth to be your servants. We'll thank you in the name of Jesus and all God's people said. Amen. Amen.